Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. Welcome to baseball's greatest hits from Voyager. Did he or didn't he? Well, people have been arguing for more than 60 years whether or not Babe Ruth called his shot in the 1932 World Series. They can argue for the next 600 years, and they still won't know the answer. What they can't argue about is this. In Game 3 of the series, Ruth hit a home run that knocked the starch out of the Chicago Cubs and led the Bombers to their first championship in three years and their last with a Bambino. Now, as the series begins, there's a lot of bad blood between these two teams. It doesn't hurt the Yankees as they take the first two games in New York. Out in Chicago, the Yankees face a jeering crowd. Most of the insults are hurled at the Babe, who tosses them right back with a three-run home run in the first inning. As he comes to the plate in the fifth, someone rolls a lemon out onto the field. Ruth just grins and steps in to hit. And here's how it sounded to millions of Americans listening to their radios that afternoon. This historic footage was shot from the stands by a Chicago printer named Matt Candle. It opens with some pregame action. Then watch carefully as Babe Ruth takes the first two pitches. Does he call his shot or not? Howdy, everybody. We're in the first half of the fifth inning of the World Series game between the New York Yankees and the Chicago Cubs. The score of four to three in favor of the Yanks. Charlie Wood is in the box for Chicago, and the first man up in this inning will be the mighty Babe Ruth. Babe has already had a home run with two on, but the Yanks are out in front, and now as we look out into the outfield, they're shifting just slightly over in the right center field. And there comes the Babe out of the Yankee dugout now, swinging his three club, and the crowd gives him a tremendous ovation. He seems to be having some kind of an argument with the boys on the Chicago bench. They have been whipping Babe Ruth all afternoon. They've been warned several times by the umpire. He get back there on the bench or he chased them to the showers. Now the fans are ribbing Babe as well. Ah, but looking down there at the smiling face of Babe Ruth, he's taking it good naturedly and only doffs his cap in acknowledgement of the adverse product. Babe Ruth steps into the batter's box. Now Charlie Wood gets the signal from his catcher, Gabby Hartman. Here's the first pitch. 
And it's a strike right down the middle. And the Sands are certainly giving it a Babe Ruth now. Looking over at the club bench, the Cubs roll up in the top set. And they're yelling flat foot and swell head and everything else at Babe Ruth. But he steps out of the batter's box. He takes a hitch in his trousers, knocks the dust off his shoes. And there he's back in there again. And now Rook lines up again. And here it comes. And it's outside. And it's even up on Babe Ruth. The crown is ball one and strike one. And once again, the fans are fooling Babe Ruth. He steps out of the box and again knocks the dust off his shoes. Boy, what a powerful figure he is at that plate. And once again, Rook gets that signal and winds up. And here it comes. And again, it's down the center and Babe Ruth steps back. And it's a call strike two. And it's two and one on Ruth now. He's behind the hitter. And the fans are giving it to him from all corners of this big field. The Cubs are up on the bench. They're all hoping that Babe Ruth will strike out. Again, Charlie Rook winds up. And here is that pitch, and it's high inside, and it goes Babe Ruth out of the batter's box, and the count is ball two and strike two. And boy, the Cubs are giving it to Babe now. Oh, Babe Ruth has stepped out of the batter's box, and he steps about two feet away from home plate. Now he steps toward the Cub dugout. We thought for a moment that he was going over there and tosses his bat at them or something. Now oh, he's smiling at them. He takes off his hat, he holds up his two fingers with his right hand. Now he drops his bat, and he's indicating that the count is ball two and strike two. He gets back into the batter's box. Uh-oh, and now Babe Ruth is pulling out towards center field, and he's yelling at the Cubs that the next pick over is going out in the center field. Someone has just tossed a, uh, a lemon down there. Babe Ruth has picked up the lemon, and now he tosses it over to the Cub bench. He didn't go, he just sort of kicked it over there. Now he's looking toward the stand. That's his turn, and he points again to center field. And here's the pitch to college ball two and strike two. It's going Babe Ruth connects and down it goes. The ball is going, 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 high into the center field stand, into the scoreboard, and it's a home run. Oh, boy, go to the next one. Matt Candle filmed more than just Babe Ruth's legendary home run. After the pregame ceremonies, he caught the Babe's three-run blast in the first inning. He also filmed Lou Gehrig and Kai Kai Kyler circling the bases after their homers. In 1969, they were called the Miracle Mets when they captured the World Series following seven years as the National League's doormat. The 1986 Mets are expected to win the championship, 
but in some ways, their World Series victory over the Red Sox is nearly as miraculous. The 86 Mets have the best pitching in baseball, along with a bevy of terrific everyday players in Keith Hernandez, Gary Carter, and Darryl Strawberry. But after a white-knuckle playoff with Houston, they face an eager Red Sox team that is not about to concede anything to the favored National Leaguers. As a matter of fact, the Sox threaten to make quick work of the Mets when they sweep the first two games at Shea Stadium. Imagine how their mouths are watering at playing the next three in front of a home crowd. But the Mets wake up somewhere between New York and Boston, and they take the next two. The Sox, though, come right back to win game five as Bruce Hurst outduels Gooden. Now the Mets face the unpleasant prospect of a must-win game against Roger Clemens. Their prospects look even worse after the Sox build a 2-0 lead after two innings. But if the New Yorkers are not playing up to their potential, they're still showing some resiliency, and they managed to tie the game in the fifth inning on singles by Ray Knight and Mookie Wilson and Danny Heap's double play grounder. The pattern continues as Boston again takes the lead with a run in the seventh before the Mets tied in the eighth. That sends the game into overtime where with Clemens now out of the game, the Mets like their chances. But the Sox strike first in the 10th. They put up two runs on a Dave Henderson homer and Marty Barrett's RBI single. Maybe the old Boston Demons are dead. Calvin Chiraldi gets two quick outs in the bottom of the 10th. Then again, maybe not. Gary Carter and Kevin Mitchell lash back-to-back -back singles. Ray Knight's blooper drops into center, scoring Carter and sending Mitchell to third. Mitchell then comes around on a wild pitch to tie the score. Now Mookie Wilson is up with a winning run on second. It couldn't happen to Boston again, or could it? Bob Murphy has the story. So the winning run is at second base with two out, three and two to Mookie Wilson. Little roller up along first, behind the bag, it gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win it. I guess the first thing I should do is thank everybody who made this day necessary. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here today. Thank God I made it. <laughs> I always loved the game of baseball. I gave it everything I had. I'm glad I had a chance to play as long as I did. I hope my being here will be an inspiration for every boy in America.
Play ball! Steer right three, you're out! Steer right! Going, going, gone. You're out. You're out. Safe at first with a single. You're out! Going, going, gone. Going, going, gone. You're out. And the ball game is over.